Do you ever feel like you don't have enough time to really create something new or you don't have enough ideas and and trying to make the two work together just isn't working? Well, I've got some ideas to share with you today that take very little time, very little in the way of supplies, and are a clever idea that you can use in all kinds of ways. So let's get started. All you need to start is an old book. So I would say go to garage sales or thrift stores or junk dealers or whatever and find some old book. This was in my family's archives and I thought this is perfect. What you want to look for is nice soft paper. Now you can do this on any kind of book, any kind of paper. For example, I have this book of hymns. The paper is a little bit heavier than say copy paper and it works on that kind of paper too. You can also use watercolor paper. Just don't use something that doesn't like to be really wet. So I'm using this old book. The other things you need are just some acrylic craft paint, a brush that you don't really care about. This is just a really inexpensive one. I think I got in a set at a dollar store. Some pens. These are permanent ink and this is a charcoal pencil. If you want to, you can go f go for more. For example, uh, I have some alcohol ink markers here. Maybe I'll use one of those. We'll see. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is get yourself some water, dampen your brush, keep a rag handy, and I always have uh, a piece of paper towel and a piece of watercolor paper for trying colors on. I'm not going to do any watercolor today, but it's really handy to have a scrap of paper of some kind that you can just, you know, swatch a color on if you want to. I've got here a white one, a pink one, and a cream one. So I'm going to start with this cream one because I think the color is really nice. I'm just going to squirt some blobs on here like that. Let's just move these. And I'm going to paint this page. I don't want it to be solid. I'm quite happy with the print showing through because if you're going to print on, um, if you're going to create art on printed paper, that's kind of the point, right? Now you can take it right out to the edge if you want to. but you don't have to. I'm going to just pop that in there. Another tip for you is if you don't want brush strokes, which I actually like the look of, but if you don't want that, these this is just a, a glove and I'm just going to just kind of smoosh it around. I, you can do this with your fingers too, but I don't, I don't like paint on my fingers very much. It tends to make my skin dry. So just wash that off quickly. And then all you have to do is let that dry. So if you're busy making supper or doing the laundry or whatever, you can come and do a, a bunch of pages like this. And then you can just tear them out, leave them all to dry, and then come back later, which is what I've done. So I'm going to move this. And here's some pages that I've done. This is the cream colored one. This is a white one. So that's this one, which is a different brand than this acry acrylic. And then a pink one. So I did three of them. And this is what you can do with it. I'm going to start with the charcoal pencil. You can use the charcoal sticks if you have them. You can use, um, I guess you could use pencil crayon, but Part of the charm of this is that it smears. And, oh, you could use chalk, but chalk tends to keep being loose, so you might not want to do that. And all I'm going to do is make some stems, and these are um, sedum. My neighbor has some, so I'm just going to um, approximate them in a really simple sketch. And you can't tell me that you can't do this. So if you're saying, oh yeah, but I can't draw, well, anybody can do a scribble like this. 
I'm going to make a long skinny stem. And even though they might not have leaves anymore, I want leaves. So I'm just going to scribble some leaves on here. And now all I have to do is just smear them around just to give kind of a, an old fashioned look. Now, if I want to, I can actually go over that again with some paint so that it goes, it shows through. And I'm, I'm just going to do that because why not? And I'm, I'm going to, instead of squirting it right on the paper, I'm just going to put a little, oh, that's the white one. I want the cream one. I'm just going to use this piece of watercolor paper as my palette and just pick it up from there. Okay, I don't need you in here. So I'll just put a little blob on that. And I want it a little bit watery, so let's just water it down a little bit. And then we can just go over it like this. It will pick up some of that charcoal, but it's a lovely sort of an antique look, I guess. Now you could put in a lot more detail in here if you want. You can. If you mix it like this, it actually makes the paint kind of a gray. I don't want too much of that gray in there. And that's all there is to it. Now, when you're done with it, when it's dry, you've got a piece that you can use in a journal, in a collage, in a mixed media painting, whatever you want. So I'll put this aside and let it dry. And now I'm going to take this one. One other thing that I, I decided to use is these crayons and they're called mixed media crayons by King Art. I got them online somewhere. So I'm, I'm going to try using some of those. And I think I want to go for vibrant colors this time. So to begin with, I'm just going to loosely sketch some flowers and just with the center, Just do it this and then you fill in and then you fill in like that and then if you want you can just do some of these little marks in here to make the petals look more petally. That is a word, I just made it up. Like that. I'm going to put a stem on this. And again, some leaves. And I think I'll put another one down here, just a little one. I think I'll just do this too. And if you do the petals opposite each other like this and just do it quickly. You don't need to fuss over it because when you do it quickly you get a more, uh, for lack of a better word or concept, you get a more artistic look. And this guy can have stem two and a leaf down here. So that's all that needs. Now I could go in with with the markers uh, maybe I'll do that next time, but first I'm going to use these. These are actually water soluble, but they're for mixed media, so they work. Okay, how do I get this open? I forget. There we go. And one of the things is broken. All right, paint, we don't need you anymore. Okay, I want to um, accentuate the pink because I've got this on a pink background. So I'm just going to color very messily onto here. I, I can see that some of my black is still a little bit wet because it's picking up. It's smearing. But you know what? I'm okay with that. And I, I want to just leave that for now. And I'm going to use a green one, which I put over here. And I think I'll go with the dark green. If 
these are very crayony, but they're also very soft. And the other daisy, I'll go with this sort of um, magenta colored one. Yeah, I call that magenta. Now, since most flowers have yellow centers, that's gold, not yellow. Let's put some yellow centers in just to make the colors pop. But you can see how my black isn't quite settled down. So ordinarily I would do one step and then I'd wait a while, then I'd do another step. But I'm messing with this in some different ways so that you can see just some different ideas. And, um, and, and come on, glove. And some things work out and some don't, but you know, that's how you learn things. So this is, I, I just want to know, does this move? And the answer is it does, but I don't like the effect. So these, these crayons are quite soft, which means that they do move. Okay, I'm going to try this with my finger because it's a little bit warmer. See how they blend? And then I got a dirty finger, which I will try to wash since they're water soluble. Oh, that almost came off. The other thing I can do is take my brush. I think I will take a, a smaller brush. This one. I guess this one's as good as any little brush. And because these are water soluble, I can actually paint with them. So I add a little bit of water. There's that one. And I can turn them into painted pieces. Now you can also skip the, the ink part and just go straight to drawing the pictures. Or you can draw them in pencil or in charcoal or whatever you like. So there's another thing that you can you can try and you can use in collages and junk journals and everything. All right, there's number two and here's number three, which is, is very similar. But I'm going to use my colored markers. Now these are alcohol markers and quite honestly, I don't know how they're gonna behave on this background because I only just thought of the idea while I was filming so and I'm not afraid to kind of wing it and have something fail because that's all part of it so th this sort of brings me to the concept of perfectionism how are you going to learn something new if you never try it because you're stopping yourself from doing it because you don't think you can do it perfectly that doesn't make sense so don't do that okay uh, let's start with uh, Here's a peach one. Now these are wedgy on one side and pointy on the other. So I'm going to make just kind of a really abstract rose kind of shape. Which goes like that. And use a different color in it to go along with it. Let's get the wedge end. These colors are quite delicate. And this background is quite, is a little bit more transparent. So this isn't showing up all that well. I am going to go with something a little bit deeper and just basically kind of go over the same lines. These are quite pale actually, most of them. Let's try this red. Now we'll get some action. I don't have a full complement of these kind of, of markers because I bought them when I was on holidays and I thought, oh, I'm not going to buy all the all the neutrals and things like that because they're not my favorite colors but now I wish I had so just using the other end here with the wedge 
that's pretty effective, I'd say. Okay, let's um, get some green on it. Here's, I know roses don't have stems like that, but they do have leaves like this. They come off on their own little twig. So let's do that. Now there is another um, system you can use here. It is, uh, well, I'll do it in another video, but using watercolors. So, and roses have quite bright green. So let's just go here. This one is quite a blue green which I guess you could say roses often are. So I'm just going to color in here and I might, I think I might go over this with black just because those pale edges aren't working. Now, another thing to remember is that alcohol inks spread, they, you know, slurp up and this paper actually like pulls the paint or the marker, whatever's wet, it'll pull on it, which is why I put down the acrylic first because that it makes a barrier. But you can see here how it's spreading, and and that's fine. I mean, you can if you like that look, you can do this without putting the the acrylic on it first, or you can use watercolor, which doesn't create such a barrier. So I'm going to just kind of color these in because this is quick. The other thing you can do is if you work with acrylic paints, is just paint it in with acrylics. I decided not to get out my acrylics today, but you certainly could. Just make these a little bit bigger. All right, now, Here's another thing you can do. I have two markers here. They're both permanent. There's that one. Fine liner. This one isn't permanent. This one is. It's a micron. It has a finer line. I want to use it, I think. I love the look of the really, really skinny, scratchy kind of line. So I'm just going to go in here and do a little bit of drawing over this. I hope you can see that. Just just to give it some shape. I love the character that this kind of pen gives to artwork and sketching. And speaking of sketching, I have an idea for some sketch videos. Let me know if you are interested in learning a bit more about easy sketch projects or starting a sketchbook or an art journal where there's some drawing in it. Let me know if that appeals to you because I've never been a big sketcher, but I kind of feel like I'm missing out and I'd like to sort of get in the habit. So if you would like to have some videos about sketching and projects that you can do in a sketchbook to fill fill a sketchbook up like how fun is that shoot me a message in the comments and say uh, yes sketchbook please or something like that okay so see how much difference that made I think it's way prettier now one thing you can do with something like this is actually cut it out cut right around it or cut around it a little bit farther or or tear it out or just tear parts of it off and use it in your collages or your journals or if you're into art journaling and you just want to play with everything just by all means do what thrills you about any of this but number one is don't be afraid to try make a mess in fact if you set out to make a mess it frees you up to to just do whatever I've always said start out by making bad art and if you it's interesting how well that works because if your goal is to make bad art, you usually end up making lovely loose art. So that's all for today. I will see you next time and thanks for watching.